Hello and welcome to this latest episode of the 100 meter dash. Recently I've had to come to terms with the fact that I'm now a master's runner and I wanted to learn about um, perfecting my recovery, my training and the injury risks that come with this age bracket. I also wanted to investigate in clinic how to help runners who experience injuries in this master's running category. From the research, I've been able to construct a four week course to build, target and increase awareness of the different muscles linked to injuries in this age bracket. And also, I'll share with some of the information I came up with with you today in this um, 100 meter dash. In clinic, I tend to see a lot of masters runners and I'm always looking to provide a greater depth of knowledge and also, I wanted to brush up my skills in managing and preventing injury in the masters category. So, there are many resources out there which I've used, um, Brad Beer, Rich Willey and Tran Yugan, and they have all looked in uh, different areas of the Masters athlete. So I've borrowed some of their information for this 100 meter dash. I literally loved all their work, but it was a bit of a rabbit hole. I started off with the, the podcast, the, the Physical Performance Show, and it was an expert edition by Professor uh, Peter Rayburn, which was classed as Maximising the Health and Performance of the Masters athlete. This then led me towards a recent journal by Rich Willey in 2019 on the Masters Athlete. The information discussed was interesting and I want to share some of the thoughts here. The definition of a Masters Athlete is defined as older than 35 years. They train for or take part in athletic competitions often specifically designed for older participants. Many of these athletes are experienced competitors who continue their athletic pursuits after their sports career have ended. They can also be individuals who return to sport after extended periods of inactivity or simply participate and train sporadically. And that was from Teros et al in 2015. So what changes do we see in the Masters athlete and what's the effect on, in particular, their Achilles tendon? So I found that the major changes between a Masters runner and that of a younger runner Firstly, were the, there was a higher reporting of injury in the Masters runner, 49% versus 45%, with the Masters runner more likely to have more than one injury occurring at one time, and again, that was 30% found that versus 24 To understand this why, I, I went and looked at a recent journal by Rich Willey. This looked at the profile of a Masters athlete. It was interesting that the findings of a Masters athlete compared to a junior athlete sh showed their susceptibility to injury. The Masters runner was likely to endure muscular and tendinous injuries, this type including hamstring, plantar flexors, Achilles tendons, while the younger athletes compiled of knee, lower limb, IT band, medial tibial stress syndrome. The thought process behind the Masters profile of injury was that added stiffness to the muscle tendons caused these injuries. Achilles tendons in particular can be directly linked to training load being too much for the capacity of the tendon. This means that the load going through the tendon is too much for it to accept and therefore causes microtrauma and breaks down. The tissue will not react positive to this load. When this happens, the capacity is then reduced further and with the same training load can result in pain and irritation to the tendon. The stiffness of the Achilles tendon also reduces when masters are compared to younger runners. The reduced stiffness results in a greater strain being put through the tendon during what we call plantar flexion or toe down movement. This increases the risk of tendon microtrauma. What is the answer um, to these um, research? Runners with a high capacity of plantar flexion and good strength are less likely to injure the Achilles tendon. Runners who have the increased plantar flexion strength and those who can generate more propulsion during running, have a reduced risk of developing Achilles tendon issues. Increased propulsion comes from the use of the whole chain, including the foot. Incidentally, this is where the highest percentage of muscle loss comes from in master runners. The research suggests that reduced gastro and soleus complex strength, i.e. calf, and also a rear foot contact strike increases the risk of Achilles tendon injury. With a four foot strike, you're continuously loading the tendon, which increases its capacity. Individuals with Achilles tendon issues hop with a reduced stiffness. This is important as running is basically a series of hops. Ineffectively, hopping generally translates to a reduced efficiency in running. 
add soft surfaces to this and you further increase the risk of Achilles tendon irritation by up to 10 times. The reason is because hopping or running on soft ground requires the body to produce more stiffness itself. If the body is producing more stiffness or the requirements exceed the capacity of the body, the tissue will inevitably break down. So avoiding soft surface running may be important in rehab for the master runner. And what about strength training? What should we do? The biggest question a lot of my clients ask is, how do I reduce the risk of Achilles tendonitis? The answer is simple. The stronger the plantar flexion strength, the greater the stiffness, the reduced risk. Strengthen the plantar flexors, which are the soleus, plantaris, and also the gastrocnemius. A recent study showed and concluded that stretching had no protective effect against injuries. Resistance training is shown to reduce overall injury risk by 50%. It would therefore suggest that masters runners should prioritise strength over their stretch in their normal exercise. The recent Unlace the Brace programme has resounding feedback for reducing pain. And also, it improves the stiffness and capacity of the plantar flexor group through targeted exercises. The book is available through the landing page to the website physiorun.net. The research recommends three to four times, six to eight reps, two to three times a week for the plantar flexors, calves in particular. This results in increased stiffness, t- tendon stiffness and increases running performance. The higher the replication count, the more negligible the tendon stiffness effect that occurs. Skipping or low level jumping can also complement the strength training. This too increases tendon stiffness, but doesn't build cross sectional area, which the strength training does. So it wouldn't be sufficient enough to do only. Hence, running can maintain strength, but it doesn't build it. Lastly, tissue adaptation takes a long time. The older you are, the longer it takes. The inclusion of strength training in the plan should be for over six months with slow progressions to allow adaptations. Whilst recovering from Achilles tendon injuries, it's important to reduce the exposure to exercise that increases the demand on the muscles. The journal cites minimalistic shoes, soft surfaces, hill running, speed work, treadmill work, and being the main risk of, as being the main risk to the injury rehabilitation. Are you a master's runner? Are you having Achilles tendon pain? Have you introduced low, slow, heavy loading? How's your rehabilitation going? Thanks very much for listening, and I look forward to catching up with you.